Well, the private and public sectors are collaborating really like never before, banding together to create partnerships to get Indiana back to work. This week, we begin the first of three biweekly segments to really drill down on uh, what it's going to take to restart Indiana's economy. And pleased this week to be joined by Indiana Secretary of Commerce Jim Schellinger, also Fisher's Mayor Scott Fadness, and KSM Location Advisors President Katie Culp, and welcome one and all to this first uh, edition uh, of the uh, of an event that we really want to focus in on uh, business survival tactics and getting Indiana uh, back to work. And Jim, I'm going to start with you. Um, you, the IEDC, certainly the governor's office, have all been on the front lines of working uh, collaboratively around the state with private sector companies, community organizations, and others, collecting a lot of personal protective equipment, those types of things. Give us from your standpoint, what you're seeing around the state of Indiana when it comes to these uh, collaborations uh, that uh, that really we are seeing on a daily basis? Well, it's interesting. I think we're on day 42 of the executive order. And at that point, the governor asked that the IDC become sort of a concierge service in addition to continuing the work that we do on an everyday basis. But we've reached out and spoken to thousands of businesses. Uh, we took out, a, did a survey, the governor led a survey to send it out to 15 different organizations and associations to say what is the best practices uh, when certain uh, the uh, non-essential businesses reopen. Uh, he's asked for, we've asked for that by market sector as well as by association. And I, I, it's really impressive. I, I gotta tell you, the people that are putting these plans together, they're very thorough, uh, much more thorough than what we're seeing as guidelines out of the uh, Center for Disease Control. So that's something that we're happy about. But in terms of uh, PE, we have a team that comes into work all day. They work late into the night because uh, uh, of different time zones. And they're putting together PPE. They're now over 7 million, like seven, almost 8 million pieces of PPE that they've actually ordered in all categories, and uh, which is great. And we've received about 2 million of them already. And they're continuing to work around the clock because we're never going to have enough PPE. And we're working very closely with the Department of Homeland Security, with the Indiana National Guard, state police, uh, and of course, uh, Homeland Security, uh, very closely with them to make sure we're collaborating on all this. And so it's been a very successful effort, um, but we still have our, our day jobs too. Yeah, all <laughs> right. Uh, Mayor Fadness, uh, Secretary Schellinger talks about collaborations and the things that he's seeing around the state of Indiana. Uh, your city, Fishers, has put together, you've put together a comprehensive uh, recovery plan, uh, really. So you're on the planning stages right now and about to implement that. Give us, in a nutshell, um, why you're doing this, why you put it together, and, and what it really involves. Uh, thanks, Gary. You know, I know the governor and Dr. Box and uh, Secretary Schoenger are all hard at work at a state level, and we know that each one of us at the local level need to do our part at a grassroots level to ensure that small businesses, medium-sized businesses, and large alike all have the infrastructure and the information that they need to be able to get back on their feet as quickly as possible. And so we, our recovery plan really has two components to it. One is a public health infrastructure that we think is critical. The other is some economic policies at a local level that will allow small businesses to really get back on their feet quickly. And we're excited today, actually, is the first day that we started testing in Fishers and uh, businesses can actually sign up to have their employees tested as well and have a personalized dashboard for each one of their businesses. So we're really excited to, to do our part at a local level to ensure our local economy is ready to go for when uh, the governor and, and Dr. Box and others make the informed decision to, to turn us back on. Yeah, and, and Mayor, obviously safety and health are, are top uh, top the list when it comes to focus areas on restarting the economy. But fr from your perspective, what you're hearing in Fishers and, and uh, around the region, how anxious are companies uh, and organizations to get back to business? They are. They're, I certainly think they're anxious to get back to business, but I think everyone found a new normal in those 42 days. And uh, there are companies that are saying, until we have the appropriate infrastructure in place, we may continue to work the way that we are until we feel comfortable bringing people back into the office. I think the, you know, what I hear on a daily basis are those small businesses. You know, if I'm a salon owner, if I'm a small shop, if I'm a restaurant, obviously that lives by that retail interaction. Um, they're, they're, they're dying on the vine and, and, and certainly are, are struggling. But one thing I did hear from a restaurant owner that I thought was really interesting, I asked him, well, what, what's your thoughts on this? He said, Scott, with the PPP program and various things that are out there, we're doing okay. What we can't survive is spending our last dollar to get reopened, hiring everybody back, 
and then three weeks later or four weeks later, everything has to get closed down again because of an outbreak. And so that's why, you know, at our local level, we feel very passionate about testing and, um, and making sure we have the public health infrastructure so that if we do have flare ups, so we can deal with those, not have to shut down the entire economy to deal with it. Katie at KSM Location Advisors, I know you advise uh, and talk to clients uh, on a daily basis about things like uh, the payroll protection uh, program, uh, which is now in, uh, I guess, uh, version two, if you will. But talk about uh, some of the government programs that are now available uh, and what you're hearing from uh, businesses, uh, not only here in Indiana, but in everywhere you do, do business, about how important those, those are to getting back to business. I, I, you know, it, it's all over the gamut right now, and I applaud what um, the secretary and mayor are doing and Governor Holcomb, because they're getting only so much information from federal government, too, which is similar to the PPP program, where banks and accounting firms and the like are trying to interpret a lot of legislation where um, much of it is vague, and we're all awaiting some additional guidance um, to come out about what some of this loan forgiveness will look like. But in general, companies are either falling into the category of having received some PPP approval, maybe not the money yet, but the approval, and now trying to decide, you know, can they use it or is it too risky to use it? Um, might they? Might there be recourse taken to from the government to get it back? And then uh, there's still a lot of companies who haven't received word yet, and they are hanging on, you know, the small restaurant owners and the hair salons, like Mayor Fadness mentioned, who are just waiting with bated breath to hear what happens. So the demand is far in excess of the uh, supply of funds, and there's just a lot of anxiety um, floating around with it. Katie, are there additional things or, or things that you uh, see that 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 the federal government, state government, can do to help uh, facilitate and to help get uh, get folks back to business? You know, I think everybody's doing it. Um, I, I think um, to Mayor Scott's point about you know you don't want to open up and then have to shut down again a couple weeks later. It's this careful balance, um, but people are very eager to get back to work. Um, and just open the economy again. And until then, I think everybody's just doing a great job. I think we're talking a lot on the business side of things, but you look at um, those who have been um, displaced for, um, from a job perspective. I mean, the state has done just a tremendous job taking on the Herculean effort of navigating an enormous um, spike in unemployment claims and then awaiting rules about how pandemic unemployment insurance will mm -hmm. will be beneficial. So it's just all of us are kind of absorbing this information and reacting as quickly as we can. Jim, you're a, a very busy guy doing all of the COVID-19 related uh, things uh, for the state, certainly. But in your quote unquote day job, uh, certainly economic development and investment, uh, keeping companies here and uh, inviting companies uh, to come do business. As you look at that process, how would you assess economic development uh, from a state level uh, uh, right now? And how important do you think it will be the way that Indiana handles uh, this whole return to business? How important will that be to the economic development game, game and getting more investment in, in Indiana? One of the things I wanted to begin with is compliment Mayor Fadness. Uh, he may not know that his plan has been brought to us, and uh, we consider it a, a, a marker. It's a trophy plan for our municipalities. So uh, we're hoping every municipality does that. But I have a little sensitivity uh, to certain terms. The one is I, I always am sensitive when somebody calls us the Rust Belt because we never were the Rust Belt. Um, we had issues, but we, you know, our automobile industry is amazing. Uh, secondly is when people talk about closing the economy and reopening the economy. Um, I'm sensitive to that out of respect for the two million people that are working um, and are still working, especially in our first responders. Um, so we we have our, our economy has slowed down and the, and what was determined by the federal government as the non-essential businesses have been really bad but in terms of of everything else we are we're just going on like a little engine that could we've had over 10,000 jobs in four months committed to indiana uh, 1.3 billion in cap x that represents about 99 projects and uh it's going great 2500 a week uh, so we are doing we've never stopped doing all the things that i see IDC is doing. We're actually continuing to do them, and we're going to continue to do them beyond this. So there's been no indication anywhere that we would change how we incentivize companies, how much we incentivize. And I'm excited about the work that the 
Indiana Economic Recovery uh, Relief and Recovery Team is doing because uh, we've been working diligently. We meet every other day for four hours a day in, in person. And I think within the next week, uh, our municipalities should be happy. There's going to be uh, money starting to be distributed from the CARES Act that will affect every single one of the 92 counties. Everyone will be impacted by it. And, and I believe this will just be an initial. Um, and then, of course, we're going to have an application process that comes back to us with everything a county would wish to do. And then we'll have additional distributions at some point in time. And I was uh, encouraged by Mitch McConnell, Senator Mitch McConnell's comments yesterday that he's now open to giving the states more money in a fourth tranche, mm -hmm. um, depending on t resolutions they reach uh, to hold certain companies not liable so that we don't have this flood of lawsuits going on as the non-essential businesses come back to work. But uh, the governor is planning to make an announcement about this on Friday. And again, he's always, he, he continues to say, I love it when he says, you know, I always want to be first and the fastest in my life and now i just want to be the surest and the safest yeah. so he is data driven uh, by the health department and others uh, and that's how those decisions will be made and it will okay. be staged all right indiana secretary of commerce jim schellinger also fisher's mayor scott fadness and katie Culp, president of ksm uh, location advisors a lot going on now certainly we really appreciate your perspective uh, as this uh, uh, getting back to work uh, agenda begins to really uh, take shape thank you all for joining us well, the COVID-19 Business Survival Series will continue uh, here on the show. You can also find a lot more information, uh, including a webinar uh, series that we have begun. And you can find that information at ksmcpa.com. And I'll be right back after this. Stay